Hello, good evening, guys. Please change your resolution of the screen as 480p. Then you can uh, view the contents properly. Is it fine with all? Can I start with the session? Okay, let's start. So, today, we are going to start with the concept of transmission lines. So, we will start with the concept of transmission line and then uh, we will go to uh, concept of smith chart <clears throat> and then we will see some matching network problem So for the transmission line, okay, uh, we have already done with transmission line, but still we will uh, revisit the concept because this makes the base of a Smith chart. And then we will understand how Smith chart actually looks like. And then we will, uh, then we will use Smith chart to uh, design a matching network and how the matching networks are designed using Smith chart. We will see that also. Okay. So uh, let us let us first understand what is a transmission line. So a transmission line, it's a medium or a channel which is used in between a source and a load. So I have a source, I have a load, and in between source and load, I connect a transmission line. So let's say this is my piece of transmission line. Now. The function of a transmission line is to carry the energy from the source side to the load side and uh, without actually inserting any of its losses into it. Now, the basic problem over here is uh, uh, if I make a trans or if I make a media or a channel, then I need to understand how it will behave on uh, uh, when I'm going to connect this in between source and the load side. So we are not much concerned about what happens at the source side. 
but we are more concerned about what happens at the load side. So if suppose I say that the load side is already matched and I'm concerned about how the transmission line will get connected or how should I connect a transmission line to the load side. Okay, before going uh, into that details, we need to understand that uh, what is a transmission line or how, how a transmission line actually looks like. So the basic concept of transmission line <clears throat> can be understood uh, using a basic funda. Now let's say I have a transmission line. Okay. And on this transmission line, I apply a NAC supply. So let's say this is my AC supply and I connect it to a transmission line. Now let us first consider the frequency of operation as 50 hertz which is the nominal uh, frequency that we usually use on uh, our day-to-day -day basis then if i calculate what will be the lambda which is nothing but c by f i'm considering lambda not actually because i'm considering instead of phase velocity i'm considering velocity of light then this comes around as 3 into 10 raised to 8 upon uh, 50 into 10 raised to uh, 0 sorry so uh, it it, it uh, the value that comes will be 3 by let's say 50 50 i can convert it as uh, 5 into 10 raised to uh, 1 so that will give me into 3 into 10 3 by 5 into 10 raised to uh, this 1 goes up becomes minus 1 so this becomes 7 so the wavelength taken by an AC cycle or the wavelength of an AC is 3 by 5 into 10 raised to 7 meters. What does this signify? 10 raised to 7 meters. So if you, if you will uh, get the value, it will come somewhere around 0 0.6 into 10 raised to 7 meters. And if we adjust that 0 0.6, then it will give me 6 into 10 raised to 6 meters. So we have 6 mega meters. So what is happening is actually uh, we are getting, if, if I consider that this is the distance on, let's say, Z axis. Then if I consider one wavelength, which is six megameters, and one wavelength, as we have seen in lecture, is nothing but uh, a distance taken by a wave to complete two pi. Understood? So here it is zero, here it is two pi. And here is my amplitude and please write in the comment box what should be the x axis let me check how many people put it on the comment box correctly what should be the x axis you can also see through my chat uh, through my window Okay, Shweta is writing the x axis should be frequency. Then uh, Prathamesh has written it to be distance. And uh, Nikhil also have written uh, distance. Sake have written distance. Okay. Chetan also written distance. Shraddha written as distance. Pratik also have written distance. Akshay also have written distance. Okay. So majority of you have written distance. So the majority of people is writing distance. So it is actually distance, not frequency. So x-axis is distance. So it is a distance taken by a wave 
to complete its 2 pi phase shift. Okay. Now, if I consider 50 hertz, the total phase shift will take actually 6 megameters. So, if I consider this as my zero point, okay, that is z is equal to zero, then after six megameters, I can actually see the phase variation or the complete sine wave completion, which is far big distance, right? So at low frequency, uh, this is not creating any trouble. So I can see that the length of the wire can be as large as possible, and I don't have to consider what will happen with respect to the length of the line. Hardly in labs you would have used a uh, length of the wire to be uh, uh, to be very optimistic as one meter. So if you consider the wire length of one meter, even though one meter length, okay, is just a little bit of this uh, six megameter. So it is negligibly small. So the phase variation along this line is zero. You cannot see any phase variation along this line because with respect to six megameter, okay, one meter is negligible. And we never use one meter. We hardly use in centimeters. Okay, so the, the phase shift over the distance is zero. Understood? So uh, let's say then if suppose I increase the frequency to, now this, this is what my uh, current problem is. Now, we increase the frequency to let's say uh, uh, 30 gigahertz. I'm I'm using the uh, the the number 30 gigahertz because it gives me simplicity in calculation of lambda naught. So now we have raised the frequency to 30 gigahertz, and now my lambda naught will be equal to c by f, which is nothing but uh, 3 into 10 raised to 8 upon uh, uh, 3 0 30 into 10 raised to 9 right so below here it becomes uh, 10 raised to 10 and when it goes up it becomes 10 raised to minus 2 into uh, this becomes 3 by 3 which is 1 uh, it comes around 1 centimeter now it's uh, a matter of concern because if you consider a resistor component, let's say, okay, I consider a resistor component, its length would be somewhere around, let's say, 1.5 centimeter. So if the resistant length is 1.5 centimeter and I apply an AC wave, okay, which is having a frequency of 30 gigahertz. What is going to happen is, let me show you what is going to happen is, if your wave overrides this structure, how it will look like? Let's say it starts from here and the total length from here to here is 1.5. Then if it starts from here, it goes its maxima, it comes to its minima and completes its 2 pi and then goes above. Yes or no? 2 pi is completed in 1 centimeter part and this extra part is the 0.5 centimeter. Yes or no? So the voltage applied at this point and the voltage that you get at this point is different. Why this happen? Because now your change in the phase is comparable to the component size. Or my lambda has started becoming comparable to the size of the component in this case what happened is on a single line or on a single resistor if i consider that line is com comparable to the wavelength then i will have two different voltages on same line so let's say this is my v0 and this is my v1 okay now can i apply kcl to this case i cannot apply what we say in kcl that if there is a wire in between no component no resistor in between and we have this as one node and this as a second node, then what will happen? If I connect them both, they both becomes what? Equipotential, but your potentials are the same. I'm saying V0 is not equal to V1. So my Kirchhoff's current law fails. That means I cannot apply Kirchhoff's current and voltage law as the frequency increases. Okay, so now I'm studying a transmission line at let's frequency 
So if I'm considering a transmission line at very high frequency, okay, so what is going to happen is my KVL and KCL will fail. They will not work for me. So I need to devise a new mechanism. So let's say I apply a, a AC source and that AC source is working in some gigahertz range. Now I know that the transmission line uh, or the study of transmission line become difficult because I cannot apply KVL and KCL. But the study of KVL KCL is uh, really easy for me. So now my voltage and current is actually a function of space and time because it's a sinusoidal variation. So it is changing with respect to time also. And now because frequency is high, it is also changing with respect to space. So now my voltage becomes a function of space and time or Z and T. And of course, the current which is flowing through this line is also a function of Z and T. That is uh, space and time. Now I cannot apply my KVL KCL as we have seen. So how to go about or how to how to analyze a transmission line? So to analyze this transmission line, what I'll do is we know that if suppose if suppose we consider a an AC wave agreed the my x axis is uh, the distance and I consider a very small portion a very very small portion of this okay now on which axis we have kept this uh, kept uh, our transmission line it is Z axis so actually my x axis is your Z and if I consider a very small small portion which I say as uh, Delta Z of a of a wave on which there is no significant phase change so what i'm doing is i'm splitting this line or partitioning this line on a very small segment or i'm pulling out a very small segment whose length is delta z and on this delta z i see no phase variation agreed everyone uh, am I making sense? Can you people please comment on it? You people please comment on it. I need to check your comments. Uh, you please comment on uh, the concept that I have uh, told you about the the the, the distance uh, the distance consideration. Uh, please tell me about the distance consideration. Are you fine with the distance consideration? Yeah, so everybody is saying yes. So I hope everyone has understood that how and why we have considered that Delta Z. Can anyone please answer why we are considering that Delta Z? Anyone can comment on uh, why we are using uh, Delta Z. What, what is the reason? Everyone is silent, huh? I, I'll go back and I'll just uh, check that. Uh, uh, we have considered this Delta Z only uh, because I don't want it to see any phase variation. And if I don't see any phase variation, then I and then I can apply my KVL KCL easily. So ultimately, what we wanted to do is we wanted to uh, apply our concept of KVL KCL. And KVL KCL can only be applied if there is no phase variation. 
So over the line, there is phase variation. But I'm pulling out or just selecting a very small piece of wire such that uh, the, 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 the transition or the change over of phase is not seen at all. OK, so if you illuminate this area or if you if you just uh, ma uh, magnify this area, what you will see is uh, just a transmission line. Let us illuminate that. And what we can see if you just illuminate that area, you see a simple line, right? Yeah, so this will be a simple line which will have some input side and which will have some output side. So for the input side, we say that I apply a voltage V of Z comma T and the current that flows through this is let's say I of Z comma T. Agreed. Now let us understand how this transmission line uh, behaves. Okay. So for the transmission line to behave, what we will under, uh, what we will do is we will just go close through this lines and understand that uh, how it actually behaves in circuit theory so for the circuit theory analysis i want a resistor inductor uh, capacitor and conductance because these are the components we are very familiar to and we can easily analyze them the voltage drop across them and current through them so we will uh, convert this line on uh, uh, with respect to circuit components okay now we know that transmission line will be made up of some uh, some conductor like it will have certain cross section and it will it is having a length of let's say delta z so the length is let's say delta z and it is having some cross section area let's say a and it will be made out of some material or uh, which we called as uh, or the, which is having a conductivity of rho so i can say that it will have a resistance r which is equal to rho l by a yes or no so the resistance uh, then this line will have what a resistance of uh, r which is because of a finite conductivity or finite uh, uh, finite conductivity of the conductor so i got into the conductor there is a resistance okay r it will happen for both upper conductor as well as lower conductor uh, I'm showing only on one side because I'm combining the effect of both and showing on one side. Okay, so the circuit analysis becomes a simpler. So this is R because of the uh, the finite conductivity of the wire. Now, second thing is happening is we know that according to Bayard Sovet law that if a current is flowing through a conductor, then there will be an associated magnetic field around it. Yes or no? So because a current is flowing through this conductor, there will be an associated magnetic field which shows self inductance. Now this self inductance or self inductance can be represented using an inductor. Okay, so that I can show a inductor. Agreed. Then we have a, a, a current flowing in the forward direction in this path, then it will go to the load and come back to the source in this reverse path. So the below conductor will be negative with respect to the upper conductor. Yes or no? So we have two conductors. And there is a space between them. You can see over here, there is a space between them. And these two conductors are separated by a distance, let's say D. So the distance separation distance is D. So we have a formula called C equals to epsilon K by D. So sorry, epsilon K A by D. Okay, so here the area is very small because they are not plates, but they are actually two cylinders. And D is a separation distance between them. And because they are kept in very close proximity, so D will be very small. So we will have a dominance of C. But C, you can see, uh, but we can see that this, uh, the capacitor actually acts in between the two. Um, the capacitor acts in between the two um, conductors. So here I will have a capacitor in between the two conductors. Agreed. So now I have a capacitor in between two conductors and I have inductor or which is called a self inductance and resistance due to individual conductor and capacitor is in between the conductor. Now, let's say because this is very low, there could be a leakage or a, a dielectric loss in between these two conductors. Due to that dielectric loss, there will be some amount of conductivity from a conductor one to conductor two. Now that small amount of conductivity can be represented using a 
loss which we called it as g so now what i got is i have a resistor r i have an inductor l i have a capacitor c and i have an uh, conductance g okay conductance and capacitors are in the shunt arm whereas resistor and inductor are in series arm yes or no so this actually is happening only for this section of transmission line yes or no so we have this this resistor inductor capacitor and conductance only applicable for this section of transmission line so i cannot write this as r because if i write this as r what mistakenly we can take is this resistor is for the whole transmission line but it is not so what i did i magnified only for delta z segment so this resistor is only for this delta z segment this inductor is only for this delta z segment this capacitor is only for this delta z segment and this conductance will only be for this delta z segment so now i have r delta z isn't it so if i if i con if i consider this this is actually a resistance which is ohms okay and it is multiplied by the length so if i if i consider this as the whole resistance r then it is r into delta l this is the total resistance so what this r becomes this r becomes the resistance density which we can relate as r per meter ohm per meter okay or we can say henry per sorry it's not l henry per meter or farad per meter or and siemens per meter so now i have this r this r if i if i consider only this r this is only per unit length if i consider only this l then it will also be per unit length if i consider this c then it is also per unit length and if i consider this g then this is also for per unit length so i have capacitor per unit length inductor per unit length resistor per unit length and uh, conductance per unit length so this resistor is not uh, focused or it's not applicable only to a small area but it is distributed over the length of the line understood so now the resistance is actually not lumped but it is distributive this is what distributive concept comes into picture so now i have a resistance which is distributed over line i have inductor which is distributed over line i have capacitance which is distributed over line and i have a, a, a conductance which is also distributed over the line what does it mean it means that uh, instead of now focusing my if i if if in in uh, a labs or so far when you have dealt with a resistor resistor we write resistor value as 1 kilo ohm right so we know that if we measure the resistance at this point this point this point whichever point you measure the resistance it will always come as 1 kilo ohm but uh, in transmission line you cannot actually measure but what we can say is some section or some length of a transmission line would be giving certain amount of uh, resistance for example i can write it like this 10 ohm per meter what does it mean that i have a transmission line which is giving a resistance of 10 ohm per meter so if i have a 50 meter line then if i have a 50 meter line then the total resistance will be 10 ohm per meter into 50 which will give me 500 ohm understood so here what we are here what we are giving as a specification is the distributive quantity rather than a lumped quantity likewise understood so this is a basic difference between a distributed distributive element and a lumped element here we can see as a frequency increases this problem dominates so when you go for higher frequencies you should actually deal with distributive elements rather than lumped elements but when you are working with, with when we are working with a with a low frequency elements that time phase difference is far more than what we have uh, the length of the devices 
so we are using lumped kind of conventions like we have ohms parads henry's and siemens whereas when we go for higher frequency we have to specify the distance because now the phase shift is occurring with respect to distance how many people have understood this concept please reply Is everyone sleeping? Okay, good. I can see many yeses and uh, Shraddha, Shraddha, I, I think so you have not understood, right? Uh, you can put, put the query what you have not understood. So please put that query so that, uh, uh, good, good, Vinod, I will surely repeat it. Very nice, Sakib. Uh, yeah, those who have not understood, actually, please put the, uh, put the, uh, put the complete, uh, Query so that I can focus on that area. Good, Akul. Can you please put the query? Uh, okay, Sunil, you want me to repeat the whole stuff again? Oh, okay. Okay, Shraddha. Fine. Okay, Sharvari. Sharvari, I think so. You have come just now and you have understood everything. Okay, so Vinod, uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, we see that if, if suppose uh, we go for the higher frequency, there is a phase change, right? So to analyze uh, the such kind of circuits, now there will be phase change uh, over a smaller distance. So I cannot apply KVL KCL. So if I wanted to actually apply KVL KCL uh, without um, without actually bringing the complications of Maxwell's equation, what I'll do is I will consider a very small portion of a transmission line where the phase change is zero. So you can see here that I'm considering delta Z uh, on to which the phase variation is almost zero and then I can uh, zoom that area up and then I can uh, see that transmission line now the transmission line only for the delta z part okay so if it is only for the delta z part then I zoom again inside and then I can see that there is a resistor there is an inductor there is capacitor there is uh, uh, conductance but this resistor capacitor conductance and inductor are not concentrated on one area they are actually distributed over that complete delta z line so if they are all over that delta z line i cannot write this as a uh, resistance ohm because if i write it resistance ohm then uh, it will be like if i write resistance ohm it means that only for this area it is one kilo ohm yes or no or for the complete area it is one kilo ohm but it is not so on this area it is not completely one kilo ohm but per unit length it is uh, whatever given ohms like for example we have 10 ohm per meter then this is only for one meter it will be 10 ohm okay if you have a line of 50 meter then it, the total resistance comes out to be 500 ohms so basically when the uh, when the wavelength becomes comparable or it uh, the the phase shift of the wavelength becomes very much uh, significant over the component size and that happens only as the frequency increases we need to actually um, go with the distributed element okay. so uh, the wavelength becomes comparable only when become the uh, the uh, as the frequency increases that's why at high frequency we say that we have to go for uh, a distributed uh, matching okay 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 good sharvari no problem i i was just kidding
drishti i am uh, not able to uh, relate to the question that you are asking uh, sir par m se hi pata chalega na what is what is m what what do you mean to say by m uh akul is it fine that whatever i have repeated was uh, was was enough for you or oh that is a good question akul but uh, i will not answer this question because i have uh, in my today's lab i have given this as an assignment to the students that they have to search that exactly at which frequency uh, i need to go for a distributed and the lumped decision so uh, what should be the high frequency is uh, uh, is what uh, is the assignment for you guys akul you are uh, really uh, uh, brilliant huh? that you want uh, i me to give that answer huh? i have given you an assignment you have to search it for okay uh, drishti arora writes meter uh, sir par uh, meter se hi pata chalega na for the whole circuit yeah yeah meter se hi pata chalne uh, chalega uh, because that is necessary okay uh, meter se pata chalna hi chahiye because uh, we cannot judge for the whole line okay uh, we cannot produce a judgment for the whole line isliye hum meter per meter mein uh, uh, dete hain uh <laughs> good good eh? good okay so uh so meter meter pe hi dena chahiye uh, there is nothing else you can do you have to give it on meters okay so we will judge the line based on that meter itself okay so can i proceed yeah everyone is still enthusiastic should we proceed again i ah, okay uh the, the the current attendance is 43 uh, viewers are there and i can see them only 43 are there our class strength is of i think so 60 and 13 students are absent <laughs> okay so let us move ahead and uh, let us understand some more uh, concepts on transmission line so now we understood that we have a transmission line which is having a resistor then an inductor then we have a conductance and we also have a capacitor yes and this capacitor is c times of delta z this is g times of delta z this is l times of delta z and uh, this is r times of delta z okay now what i do is i apply a voltage v of uh, sorry v of z comma t over here and let's say this point uh, and the total length of the line is what is delta z so this is delta z so here when i apply the input voltage at this point at this two points it is v of z comma t and the voltage that i get after delta z is uh, v of uh, i'm getting after delta z so it will be z plus delta z comma t okay i'm only worried about what is happening in the spit variation because we are freezing the time or we are saying that the uh, as we have seen in waves also uh, because there are two variables so i can freeze one variable and work with the other 
so what you are i'm doing is i'm freezing my time and i'm working with the um, space variable okay so i'm saying that the input voltage is uh, z comma t whereas the output voltage will be after delta z so after delta z the voltage will come as z plus delta z okay and uh, comma t and the current that is flowing uh, into this circuit at this end is let's say i of z comma t and the current that comes out from here will be uh, let's say i sorry i of z plus delta z comma t okay so now i have a uh, need to analyze this circuit okay so if i wanted to analyze this circuit let us now we can apply kvl kcl right so you have one node now we know that there is no variation of phase al uh, along this segment because the segment is as small as possible so if this is as small as possible this uh, two nodes will be having the same potential which is uh, this v <clears throat> uh, z plus delta z comma t so here they will be at the same potential but this potential and this potential will not be the same so let us apply KVL and from KVL uh, to the input side loop. If I apply KVL at this loop, okay, here I apply KVL uh, and we assume that this to be plus and this to be minus, okay. So plus and minus, I'm giving the voltage. Uh, so let us apply KVL. So what KVL will give me is uh, voltage of z comma t is equal to z comma t is uh, sorry not equal to i'm extremely sorry let us apply kvl properly again so if i apply kvl then we have uh, let's say first i'm going first the voltage is v of z comma t this at this branch i have a voltage of v z comma t then I go in, then I, I see the resistance. The potential drop across this resistance will be R into I, and R is given as this into I. So it comes as, uh, so it comes as minus along the path. Uh, current, is, current is also along, uh, current, current is flowing in this direction, and I'm also going in that direction. So when the directions are the same, I will put a voltage drop as minus. So I have R delta Z, okay uh, i of z comma t okay minus okay for inductor uh, the current uh, the voltage drop is given as uh, l which is l delta z do i z comma t by do t okay because inductor voltage is given as l d i by d t now the current is a function of space and time both. So I have written here uh, uh, a partial derivative instead of a complete derivative. And then I write minus uh, V of, okay, uh, Z plus delta Z, del plus delta Z comma T, which is equal to zero. See where this is coming from, we know that voltage drop across this two branch is same as this isn't it because this node this node and this node are all at working operating at the same potential so the potential drop across this conductance will be this one yes or no so i'll write that as a potential uh, drop because i'm going along the path and potential will be plus to minus so i go to the minus so if i consider this to be plus and this to be minus then i'm going from plus to minus here you are going from minus to plus so <coughs> When you're going from minus to plus, you can, you have to put a positive sign. So that is the first equation uh, we have applied what? A, V, L. How many people understood? Please reply. Uh, how many people have understood that how i got that uh, second voltage into picture uh, why why the second voltage is uh, uh, why the second voltage is there in the uh, in the kvl
Yeah, put it, put it, put in the answer why we are putting uh, the second voltage in place. That. Okay, good. Good, Tejas. Uh, it is actually potential drop across conductance. Uh, uh, Sharvari, uh, we are actually, uh, if you see the circuit, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just go back to the circuit. Rest people, please put on commenting and please put on answering because your answers will be considered. Okay, so please put on answering the things. Till that time, I'll explain it back to Sharvari. Sharvari, uh, what is happening over here is uh, you can see that these two branches are in parallel. And across this branches, there is a voltage drop of V, V of Z plus delta Z comma T. So if I consider this to be the voltage drop, same voltage will apply over here and same voltage will be applied over here. So when I'm going over this conductance path, what is going to happen is I'm going to write it as G times of I uh, Z T. Okay. So when I'm going to write that over here, it is actually the voltage drop across this. And what is the voltage drop across this? It is same as that of this because they are in all parallel. So because they are all in parallel, I will assume this voltage uh, at this point. That's why we are considering this voltage over here. Okay. So I hope you have understood, Sharvari. Uh, very good, Akul. So, Shant, very nice. Aways, it's really good. Drishti, also nice. Shweta, I want answers. And going from positive to negative, yes. Very nice. Omkar, good. Very nice. Very well written. Okay, Sharvari. Good that you understood. Let us. Good, good. Very nice. Uh, Zuleka, very good. Uh, let us let us now come back to the circuit and uh, apply KCL at this node. OK, if we apply KCL at this node, let us apply now KCL. If you apply KCL at this node, what we can see over here is I'll just change the color of my pen and let us make it red. Okay, if you apply KCL, how many cards are there? Can anybody tell me at this node? I'm standing at this node. This node and this node both are one and the same. So how many currents are coming incoming and how many currents are outgoing? Can you please write in the comment box? Uh, give me the currents. Uh, people are saying, uh, okay, Prathamesh is saying that there are uh, two incoming currents. Nikhil is also saying that there are two incoming currents. Uh, Prachi uh, is saying that, okay, there are two outgoing currents. Okay, Shubham Badane has written very well that it is one incoming and two outgoing. Okay. Shweta has also written one incoming and the two outgoing. Good. Uh, Divya has written one incoming. Okay, Divya, I want the total current. So one incoming is correct, but I want the total currents. Okay, and two out. Good. Okay. Sharvari is also saying the same. We know the current splits at first node only. Uh, dear, the nodes are one and the same, Vinod. 
So uh, current will split. Uh, instead of splitting the current, you first uh, combine the capacitor and the in the, uh, the conductance branch together, and then we can consider it as one branch in uh, admittance, and then um, the current splits into two. Yeah. So there is actually uh, one incoming current and two outgoing currents. Everyone is exactly correct. So we have the current that is coming in is uh, this one, which is I uh, Z comma T, and the currents that are going out is this one and this one. So this current is an outgoing current, and here also I have a outgoing current. Okay. So let us let us apply KCL and see how it looks like. So if you apply KCL, the equation will be, uh, I'll write first the incoming current. So the incoming current is I of Z comma T, which will be equal to, okay. Uh, no, not equal to, I'm sorry. Uh, we, will, we will write, okay, we'll write to equal to, no problem. Equal to, okay, the current that is passing through the first branch, it's let's say g times of delta z and uh, i don't know the current so let us write the current will be g times of uh, v so it will be v of uh, z plus delta z comma t so this is delta z comma t minus c delta z v of z plus delta z comma t and uh, oh this g will have written plus so this also becomes plus because i'm writing other side of the so we know kc less all incoming currents is equal to all outgoing current so here is one outgoing current here is one outgoing current and here is one outgoing current so there are three outgoing currents or we can say these are the, the outgoing currents and this one is outgoing current and this is the incoming current. So I'll write it to this. We can combine this both the branches uh, uh, directly. That's not a problem. Okay. And then finally we have uh, plus I of uh, Z plus delta Z comma T. Okay. So this is my KCL. How many people have understood KCL? Can you please comment on it? The application of KCL. Everyone understood the application of KCL? Okay, good. So maximum people have really understood. Those who have not understood can come tomorrow to uh, understand it well. Okay. So that is what my KCL equation is now. So we got a KCL equation. We got a voltage equation and we got a current equation. These two equations are called as telegraphers equation. So please note this because this can be asked as a two marks question. These are called as telegraphers uh, equation. Okay, so you can you can mark this KVL and KCL equations, which are called as telegraphers equation. Now uh, we will consider that uh, the the voltage and current are sinusoidally varying uh, or cosinusoidally varying. That actually eases our life because we have seen in terms of wave equation that when we go as a cosinusoidally or a sinusoidally varying equation, then we can write them in a phase form, yes or no? So I can easily represent a sine wave in its phasor form. Uh, uh, so uh, we will use, uh, we will say that my voltage and currents are actually phases instead of, uh, or they are cosinusoidally varying. So I can write them as phases and in phasor we can, uh, we can separate the, time variability and the space variability. So we are freezing the time and we are only considering the space. 
so if i freeze the time and only consider the phase uh, because now i'm not worried about time so i can write it like this b v of z because i'm considering only the space part upon d z okay which is equal to fine minus uh -huh. now where am i getting this derivatives uh, that is a very big question where am i getting this derivatives uh okay fine let us get the derivatives now what we will do is uh here you can see there are uh, delta z everywhere yeah every everything is been multiplied by delta z delta z delta z right so if suppose uh, i will make delta z go to zero okay i'm making delta z as small as possible itna small okay, i'm putting it as a limit this equation i'm putting as limit delta z tending to zero and for the current also i'm putting limit delta z tending to zero and divide uh, this side by delta z and this side by delta z and also this side by delta z of course i will divide this side also by uh, every equation i'll divide by delta z then and i'm taking the limit over delta z by um uh, over over delta z then what is going to happen is uh, my equations are going to convert to uh, derivatives so so i will directly write the derivative equation because i don't want to prove again that maths so the derivative equation comes around please believe me for this now uh, because it's too late now <laughs> so i'm not proving it uh, j omega l of i z and i'm getting d i of z by d z as equal to okay uh, minus okay uh, g plus j omega c uh, v of z okay so these two equations are very important okay from phasor point of view because now what i got is i have uh, i i received a voltage in terms of current and current in terms of voltage as you can see but they are space derivatives okay so this is space derivative of voltage and here i have current this is space derivative of so let us bring everything in terms of uh, let us bring everything in terms of probably uh, voltage or everything in terms of current now we have your i of z so if i derivate this equation once what i'm going to get i'm derivating this equation once once more so i'm going to get uh, this as d square v of z by d z square i'm derivating it with respect to z which is equal to minus okay r plus j omega l will come out as a constant and this becomes d i z by d z and this equation i know d z d i z by d z is nothing but this term so if you substitute it will be d square v of z by d z square will be equal to this minus and this minus will convert to plus and there will be addition of two terms which is r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c uh, into uh, v of z okay this term i called it as gamma square okay so now my equation becomes d square v of z by d z square i bring everything on this side that comes minus gamma square into v of z equals to zero is this equation familiar to you oh shada shada what what have you not understood
Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Some people have missed something. Okay. 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 I will repeat. Uh, KCL. KCL need to be repeated again. Yeah. Is it? Is it so? Uh, can you? Can you? Can you guys please uh, repeat what you have not understood? Because uh, please put the uh, put the appropriate query. Then I can repeat that much part. Uh, three users fall back. I think so. They have slept already. Uh, KCL, you guys have not understood. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Fine. So, fine. Let us go back to KCL. Now, in KCL, what we have done is, uh, uh, let's say for the KCL part, I will write with some other color so that you will understood. Okay. Now for the KCL part, what I'm I'm doing is I I see this node, right? So this node has this current, this current, this is the current, and this one is the current, right? Now I don't know what this current is, right? So what I'll do is because they are in the shunt part, so I'll make it this uh, G into V and C into V. So that will give me I. I will be equal to uh, C into V and D into V. Okay. Because they are in the shunt arm. Uh, oops, I have made a small mistake over here. Ah, no one understood. Huh? I made a mistake over here. No one has notified me. Uh, what is the charging? Uh, what is the uh, what is the current equation for capacitor? Capacitor current equation is C D V by D T. Ah, you have not told me that. Okay. So let us let us rewrite the KCL. Now KCL went wrong, actually. So let's do it back. So I'm saying my incoming current is I Z comma T, which is equal to now. This is incoming current alone. Now who all are outgoing? Now outgoing is this current, right? So this current I'm writing as G. G value is this, and the voltage across it is V Z. Plus delta z comma t. Okay, then what we are doing is we are going this capacitor, right? Now for the capacitor, it is again outgoing, so it will come this side. So I'll write plus. Now for the capacitor, I will write C. Okay, and then uh, we will have D by dt of the voltage. So voltage is V z plus delta z comma t okay and finally plus uh, this current which is going outside is i z plus delta z comma t yeah now uh, how many people have understood this equation How many how many people understood the KCL equation? Suppose KCL समझ में आया? Oh, one more fallback. Omkar, did you understood? Yeah, okay, good. He understood. uh drishti did you understand now yeah good pratik also understood nikhil understood shubham understood good okay so uh, we we all uh, have seen now there is some kvl and kcl right now what we normally do is we let's say i divide this by delta z okay if i equate if i divide this by delta z this gets divided by delta z this gets divided by delta z and even this gets divided by delta z right and then uh, what we do is we put limit uh, delta z tending to 0 uh, this actually is a definition of a derivative 
so then by putting limit delta z goes to zero this actually turns this to a derivative now that derivative will be like this derivative of current which is varying with respect to z and t divided by z derivative of z okay that will be equal to g times of okay uh, this delta z will get cancelled and you get d times of uh, this becomes again the derivative of z okay this becomes the derivative of z again and uh, yeah that becomes a derivative of z again and then uh, if, you, if you proceed in this way okay ultimately what you will get is a, 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 an equation in terms of this derivatives right then what i'm doing is i'm removing this dependency and i'm saying that i'm freezing the time i'm not saying that it is not time independent it is not time dependent i'm saying that we will freeze the time and we will see what happens only with respect to space so when i do that this partial derivative will be converted to a complete derivative and then i will get this equation now everyone understood how that complete derivatives come into picture yeah can you give me the answer Yeah, everyone got it okay good chal so i i will give this uh, probably this this equations we can prove it in class uh, no problem i will bring this equation to the class and we will prove this to this point in class don't worry okay uh, now let us go ahead because it's 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 creating a lot of chaos now i got a voltage equation Uh, which is in terms of current and i got a current equation which is in terms of voltage we have minus over here and we have minus over here right now what i do is uh, let us say that i uh, i i wanted to remove this current from this equation so if i wanted to remove the current from this equation i just uh, take derivative of this equation once again this becomes d square vz by dz square equals to minus r r plus j omega l uh, this becomes d by d i z by d z which is this so i'm derivating this equation once with respect to z so this equation is derivated once with respect to z and then what i get is this equation okay once i reach to this equation what i do is i substitute d i z by d z in this equation and there is a minus sign associated over here and there is a minus already is there so this minus and this minus becomes plus and i get this and this is what i put substitute this for this i substitute something called as a gamma so gamma is d square vz by dz square minus gamma square v of z equals to 0 so this is uh, th uh, have you have you have seen this equation before have you ever seen this equation before please reply and if you have seen this if your answer is yes please say that uh, please comment where we have seen this uh, this this uh, equation excellent ketan any more people any more guesses uh, good prathamesh very good tejas good drishti yes any more people perfect kramit <laughs> it 
Hitesh in WTP or uh, we have seen that in wave equation actually. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, Nyaneshwar, correct. Good, Prachi. It's it's exactly correct. We have seen that as a wave equation. So we have put this as a wave equation. And in the wave equation, we know that this is what? The propagation constant. And now the voltage has become what? A wave. Now I don't have anything called as a voltage or a current, but instead I have a voltage wave and the current wave. So when I deal with the transmission line, uh, instead of dealing with voltages and currents at points, we are actually dealing with a voltage wave and a current wave. Understood how that waves comes into picture on a transmission line? Okay, so now when we have that wave on a transmission line, uh, then I wanted the solution of a wave. So can anyone write the solution of a transmission? How many people can write the solution of a, trans uh, of a wave? Uh, we have written that solution in, uh, of the wave in, uh, in, 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 uh, in some second or third lecture. So probably you can refer that notes and you can write the wave equation solution, how it will be. How many terms? Okay, let us, let us, uh, let us uh, simplify the things. How many terms will be there in the wave equation? How many total terms will be there in the wave equation? Yeah, people, please comment. How many how many terms will be there in uh, wave equation? Oh, okay. We know that has written something. Good. Okay, good. Uh, uh, four terms. Okay, Nikhil. Yeah. Hitesh has written three terms. Okay, Tejas is writing four terms. Okay. Yeah. Any more guesses? Anyone wants to guess more that how many solutions will be there for this uh, equation? Or how many terms will be there in the equation? Uh, people are writing three, four, okay. Umkar has written three, Viraj also have written three, good, okay. V is equal to V naught E raised to, okay. Zuleika has written uh, one term, good. Prachi has written three, Shivani three. Ankita also have written three. Uh, Actually, uh, we are having, uh, see, uh, okay, so do you all agree that this is a second order differential equation? Yeah, do you all agree that there is a, this is a second order differential equation? Yeah. Okay, good. Prathamesh, it's a second order differential. Yes, okay. 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 So, for the second order differential equation, if I wanted to solve, uh, then I want that uh, the second order differential equation should have a, a two solutions. Don't you think so? Yes or no? So if I have this solution, this this as this this as a second order equation, then I okay. So that solution will be for v of z because v of z is the variable, and there will be two solutions. The first solution will be I'll write a constant as v plus, which will have e raised to minus gamma z, and the second solution will be v plus v minus we write e raised to so there will be actually two terms in the solution first term 
is having a constant of b plus and second term is having a constant of b minus now how does it helps us or what what does it signifies the the so uh, the actual actual uh, the actual term says that when it is v plus okay e raised to minus gamma z actually interprets a wave which is traveling in the forward direction so this is a wave traveling in the forward direction whereas the wave which are the the constant with v minus plus gamma z is the wave traveling in the backward direction so we have two solutions now one solution says that there is a wave which is traveling in the forward direction and the second solution says that there is a wave traveling in the backward direction so the total voltage on the transmission line is combination of two waves one is the forward direction and one is the backward direction so we have something called as uh, if if we if we draw a transmission line like this then the voltage is going in this direction which we called as the amplitude of which is v plus and the wave which is coming back over here the amplitude of which will be v minus this is the amplitude what about the phases the phase of this is given by e raised to minus z and the phase of this is given as e raised to plus gamma z okay if suppose if you consider this to be a z is equal to zero point okay then when the wave travels in this direction okay it will have z in negative value so the wave will diminish and when the wave is traveling towards zero z will be having positive numbers and hence the wave will again diminish so the wave will go on diminishing as it travels back and forth so it does not really mean that if i put z is equal to infinity over here the wave will go on increasing because it is e raised to plus gamma z right what does it mean if i have e raised to infinity then this will go to infinity no it will not happen so because the value of z will be negative this wave will also go on decreasing on this side the amplitude will go on decreasing this side and when it comes on this side it will also go on decreasing this side. so now we have uh, something called as a wave which is moving forward and a wave which is moving backwards okay so the wave which is moving forward and a wave which is moving backward with respect to z is equal to zero is what we have on a transmission line now how does this thing helps me that we will see because uh, in smith chart this quantities are very important okay now we got the solution for the voltage v of z as equals to v plus e raised to minus gamma z plus v minus e raised to minus gamma z. oh sorry plus gamma z. similar way if you apply for current i of z becomes equals to i plus e raised to minus gamma z plus i minus e raised to minus gamma z everyone agrees to this Yeah, everyone agrees to the solution for current and voltage. Any problem? Oh, good, Sunny. If you have come after a long time. <laughs> okay okay fine no problem <coughs> now what i'll do is i will apply uh the solution in such a way that uh i will get some important quantity okay 
and that quantity is very 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 important you need to understand that quantity well now what we do is uh, we have a voltage equation and we have a current equation and from voltage and current i want a quantity called as a uh, an impedance or probably uh, a resistance okay so uh, because they are complex quantities uh, we will not get uh, a real value or probably we will get a real value let us see how that actually helps us so um, i will what i will do is uh, i will put uh, how should i go about this now uh, okay now uh, what i'll write is i'll write this equation huh? let me see how many people understands this in a one go okay uh, i write like this i of z is equal to i of z equals to gamma upon r plus j omega l okay v0 plus e raised to minus gamma z oops plus v0 minus e raised to plus gamma z how many people have understood from where i got this equation No, Shweta, you didn't get. Uh, good Sharvari, that's a, a nice political answer from about derivation. <laughs> uh, actually, what I'm doing is over here, uh, <clears throat> we actually got this uh, answer uh, from the <clears throat> instead of second order derivative, you consider the first order derivative equation. Okay, uh, when we see that first order derivative equation, uh, from the first order derivative equation, uh, if, if if we consider um, uh, okay, so let let me uh, okay let let okay okay Sharvari fine no problem. So let us let us consider uh, this derivation a bit. So what I do is uh, I apply uh, the equation in such a way that. Uh, if I find d v z by uh, d z, okay. If I find d v z by d z, let us find what will happen if I find d v z by d z of this equation. Then I'll get uh, v plus is a constant, so it will it will be v plus, and this gamma will come out minus gamma e raised to minus gamma z plus uh, or uh, yeah plus v minus again there will be a gamma again this gamma will come e raised to plus gamma z right so i got this dvz by dz and then dvz by dz is minus r plus j l and uh, here what i do is i pull out okay what what we do is we uh, minus uh, r omega uh, r j omega l uh, into i of z into i of z is equal to yaha se we will pull out gamma common 
and then i get if i pull out gamma common then i get v uh, minus e raised to gamma z minus v plus e raised to minus gamma z and then i of z will be equal to gamma upon r uh, plus j omega l now uh, we have a minus sign over here right if i wanted to remove this or adjust this minus then it becomes v plus e raised to minus gamma z minus v minus e raised to plus gamma z yes or no so that becomes my uh, uh, current voltage now this is my voltage wave v okay and this is my current so i is equal to uh, so by ohm's law i can say i is uh, i is equal to uh, or uh, v by r or v by z i can say in general terms or i'll write it again so i is equal to v by z i want so if i want 1 by z then i should write this as 1 by z right so we can write like 1 by z will be equal to gamma upon r plus j omega l or you can write z to be equal to r plus j omega l upon gamma yeah uh, all of you understood what i am doing open interactive session uh, uh thanks akbar yeah everyone understood what i uh, what i'm doing and how that substitution comes out sharvari was exactly right that you have to actually uh, use the above derivation to uh, do this okay yeah good so now everyone understood so so what what we have got a very important a uh, very important result is this impedance so let us go back and and and, and just see the impedance okay because we are very much uh, concerned about this impedance now so what we have is uh, now we have a, a, a z given as equal to um, r plus j omega l divided by gamma and we have substituted gamma as r plus j omega l and gamma we have substituted as root of r plus j omega l uh, I'm extremely sorry. I'll rewrite this equation. It's all correct, but it's, it's coming very weird. So I'll write it again. So what I'm writing is Z is equal to, okay, I'm getting R plus J omega L upon, uh, we are writing here as gamma. And if we remember that the gamma that we have written is, so I'll write, j omega l and gamma is under root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c okay so if you combine these terms you will get under root of r plus j omega l upon g plus j omega c yes correct so now what we have is an impedance which depends on the parameter r l g and c which we have given which we have found for a transmission line this impedance is called as a characteristic impedance which we denote as z naught so for a lossy transmission line z naught is given as root of r plus j omega l upon g plus j omega c i hope everyone understood what i am what i'm doing or where the characteristic impedance got this formula from Thank you. 
okay so this is what the characteristic impedance is all about so now we understood that when i make a transmission line based on the internal parameters of the length of the wire the conductivity of the wire the dielectric uh, losses the distance between the wire and everything that itself gives an impedance to the wire and that impedance we called as the characteristic impedance and the characteristic impedance is an inert quantity it comes with the transmission line because this r l g c cannot be removed yes or no that we get as it is from the transmission line so it becomes a it becomes a integral part of the transmission line so whenever i design a transmission line i'm going to get an integral impedance which we called as a characteristic impedance z not okay now this is uh, if suppose i make r equal to g equal to 0 this means that the line is lossless this means that the line is lossless uh mummy apan thoda ardha tasani bolyo na yachavar please so the impedance is uh, so r is equal to g is equal to 0 we make so the imp the resistance and the conductance are making zero and we know that the conductance is coming due to dielectric losses and the resistance is coming due to finite conductivity so both of this if i make it zero then i am making the loss going zero so if i am making the loss go zero then the z not comes as root of j omega l upon j omega c so j omega j omega gets cancelled and z not is root of l by c so for a lossless transmission line the characteristic impedance is given as root of l by c and for a lossy transmission line the the characteristic impedance is given by r plus j omega l upon r plus j omega c uh, all of you understood uh, uh, Sanif, I'm not understanding what you are, uh, what what you mean to. Uh, huh, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, uh, for a lossless media, of course, alpha will go to zero. Correct. Uh, so, can you please scroll up the notebook once so that we can be correct? Okay. Yeah, alpha alpha actually goes as zero. Correct. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Now we have come up with a very good uh, a base of a, of a transmission line. Okay, so now we have understood that uh, now we, without, without much focusing on uh, the fundamentals of transmission line because, uh, because the, the, that is a very big topic actually in all. So I don't want it to uh, go more into that because then we, can, uh, then we have to skip about the, the, about the Smith chart. So as soon as possible, I need to enter Smith chart. Okay. So now if suppose I consider uh, a transmission line with uh, an inherent impedance of Z0. So whenever I have a transmission line, I will, uh, I will have its inherent impedance given as Z0. And if suppose I terminate this line into a uh, impedance of let's say ZL, then for a maximum power transfer it becomes mandatory for me that the z0 is equal to zl or zl should be equal to z0 because when the impedance matches then only the maximum power will transfer yes or no how many people agrees Yeah, good. So now, as we all agreed that uh, the if suppose this Z0 is not equal to ZL, what is going to happen is I'm going to get a wave which will be incidented towards the load. And all of a sudden, when I see an impedance mismatch, uh, my wave is going to get reflected back. Yes or no? So I'm going to have I'm going to ha have a reflected wave and I'm going to have an incident wave on the line. If I take the ratio of it, then what I get is called as the reflection coefficient so the reflection coefficient is uh, nothing but gamma which is equal to v minus upon 
V plus. Now, we know that both the voltages are having an amplitude as well as the phase. Uh, so we will have E raised to uh, gamma Z for this. And here we will have E raised to minus gamma Z. And then you will get gamma equals to uh, V plus V minus upon V plus as the magnitude and it becomes E raised to uh, this gamma minus gamma Z up goes becomes plus. This is plus gamma Z. It becomes to gamma Z. Okay, so we have a phase. Okay, we have an angle of gamma and we have a magnitude of gamma. Understood. So what will be the magnitude of gamma maximum? Yeah, can any can you please reply? What will be the maximum magnitude of gamma? <laughs> okay, Drishti, we are not going to extend it. Uh, I'll I'll not go uh, much into uh, how uh, actually we can design a, a, a sub matching or a lump matching. We will just finish with the Smith chart, how it looks and how it is created. Okay. No, you can just give me um, what will be the magnitude value of gamma. Yeah. Maximum, maximum. What will be the maximum value of gamma? Okay, gamma, gamma actually reflects uh, gamma magnitude. I'll focus on magnitude of gamma. So magnitude of gamma reflects that uh, the this is voltage reflected upon uh, voltage incident or wave reflected upon wave incident. So it is actually a ratio of uh, what is reflected upon what has been given. So if the maximum reflection occurs, then whatever I give comes back to me. So in that case, V minus becomes V plus and hence it goes to one. And uh, the minimum value will occur when uh, the V minus that is no reflection occurs. So minimum value will be zero. So the magnitude of gamma will be having a maximum value of one and a minimum value of zero. So gamma will be going from zero to one uh, and it will not extend outside zero to one. So what is the maximum value of gamma is one and minimum value of gamma is zero. Okay, now we will come to this point. What is a phase? Now the phase will vary up to two pi. Correct. The phase will vary up to 2 pi and here the phase value is given as 2 gamma z equals to 2 pi. Correct. So 2 gamma z equals to 2 pi we got because the phase maximum can go up till 2 pi on a circle. If you move it will give a maximum phase of 2 pi. So 2 gamma z equals to if you consider lossless case gamma becomes equals to j beta. So that gives me 2. Okay. J beta z equals to 2 pi. Understood? Now, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I missed uh, J terms. No, it's correct. J beta. Yeah. So J beta, uh, J beta terms are there on both sides. So we have, uh, okay, theta is equal to uh, 2 beta and theta is 2 gamma Z. <coughs> yeah. It's correct. Theta is 2 gamma, uh, 2 beta z. Oh, um, excuse me, sorry. Uh, here the j terms will not come because, uh, yeah. So, okay. So I'll write like this. Uh, again, again, I'll write like this. So actually, we want that the gamma should be magnitude of gamma and then phase should go like this, isn't it? But I don't have J over there, right? So to adjust that J, this J will get cancelled. Okay. So, so if, if if I write uh here, if I write here itself beta as two uh, J. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Let 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 me let me come back. Let me come back. Okay. We have understood that the magnitude is going from zero to one. Yeah. Everyone agrees that magnitude goes from zero to one. Everyone understood to this point.
yeah everyone agrees to uh, the magnitude goes from 0 to 1 then i can proceed with the phase yeah can i can i proceed with the phase then yeah so let us come up come back to the phase point so what phase point we have is now we have uh, gamma is having some magnitude and then we have e raised to 2 gamma z i put that uh, gamma as j beta so it becomes 2 e raised to 2 j beta z and then i will write it as mod of gamma e raised to j 2 beta z so what is the phase the phase is 2 beta z understood so this this will not come this this is this is half uh, knowledge my my mistake sorry so then we can go ahead with uh, let's say uh, so maximum phase that it can reach is 2 pi and uh, here we have 2 beta z 2 beta z equals to 2 pi then uh, this becomes as 2 beta 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 uh, 2 will get cancelled so beta z beta z will be equal to pi and beta is written as 2 pi by lambda so beta is 2 pi by lambda into z which is equal to pi again so again pi pi gets cancelled and the z becomes equals to lambda by 2 that becomes equals to lambda by 2 again now what does this mean z as lambda by 2 a total phase of 2 pi gives me a total fish or a total length of lambda by 2 so if i move from from let's say this as z is equal to 0 to z is equal to lambda by 2 my gamma will repeat yes so the total phase the total distance is lambda by 2 a very important point for you to note because we are going to see the the smith chart and on the smith chart the the total radius or the total two, uh, 360 degree rotation equates to lambda by 2 here we can see that the total 360 that is 2 pi equates to what wavelength lambda by 2 please remember this exactly okay gamma at this point and gamma at lambda by 2 will be the same okay again after lambda by 2 it will be the same that is at lambda and again at lambda by 2 it will be the same so what happens at lambda is uh, so lambda by 2 equals to 2 pi you get and lambda becomes equals to pi i hope you all have understood Yeah, beta beta is two pi by lambda. That is that is what we have seen even in the in the previous case of wave equations. Yeah. So we have now uh, uh, z as given as lambda by two, and gamma maximum value is going from zero to one. Okay. So let us let us consider two cases, and uh, then we will finish off the session. So I'll not I'll not extend the session. I'll just finish up the session. So uh, so just bear with me more uh, uh, ten minutes. So let's say that uh, if suppose the maximum value of gamma is one, and when it will be one. Second thing is like gamma. We have understood that gamma actually uh, depends on how much is the amount of mismatch. If I have Z not mismatched with ZL, Z not mismatched with ZL. If I have, then I will get reflections. So I can even represent gamma in terms of impedances. So the, the representation of gamma in terms of impedances is, let's say that I have a ZL as an impedance. So ZL minus Z0 upon ZL plus Z0. I'm not proving this now. This is actually the magnitude. Okay, and we will take two cases for the Smith chart. Case uh, three cases will take. Let's say case one. If ZL is equal to uh, if if ZL is equal to Z naught, 
what will be gamma please answer if zl is equal to z not what will be gamma Uh, Tejas, I'm saying ZL is equal to Z naught. You please see the formula correctly and uh, answer. What will be gamma? Yeah, exactly correct. So gamma in that case will be equal to zero. Gamma is in this case will be equal to zero. Now, if I take a case two, if I take case two, that my ZL is equal to zero. ZL is equal to zero. This condition means ZL is zero. Impedance is zero. Impedance is zero. Matlab short circuit. ZL is zero means impedance is zero. That means short circuit. In this case, what will be gamma? Please tell me. Yeah, can you please tell me the gamma for uh, ZL is equal to zero? Super Omkar, you exactly will get when you put ZL is equal to zero, it becomes minus Z naught upon Z naught, which is equal to minus one. Okay, so the minimum value of gamma now we are getting is minus one. And for case three, For case three, if ZL is equal to infinity, that means the maximum impedance. So we have open circuit. So we have open circuit. What will be gamma in this case? Yeah, uh, now you please tell me about uh, the if it is plus uh, sorry uh, if it is infinity oh very good tejas it is it comes to be infinity okay maximum oh good uh, diplomatic correct omkar uh, it is uh, maximum value <laughs> okay uh, yeah it's open circuit maximum okay infinity uh, drishti infinity okay uh, okay so in this case we normally solve it like this it becomes uh, infinity minus Z0 upon infinity plus Z0. So it gives me infinity answer, but you are not supposed to solve it like that. What you do is you pull out Z, ZL common. So from the first term, when I pull out ZL common, it becomes one. And here I get Z0 by ZL divided by, I pull out Z0 common again. So that also becomes one plus Z0 by ZL. So now if you put infinity, anything divided by infinity is zero. Okay, here I'm pulling out ZL. This ZL, ZL gets canceled and anything divided by infinity is zero. So this term will be zero. And again, this term will be zero. So you get one by one ratio, which is equal to plus one. I hope everyone understood what I how I got that plus one, not ex exactly infinity. Everyone understood uh, how we are getting one. We are not supposed to solve infinity problems. So what I do is I pull out my ZL common. And when I pull out my ZL common, then it becomes Z naught by ZL. And anything divided by infinity uh, is, uh, Z, is zero. So that's why I'm getting plus one. Yeah, everyone understood? So now gamma has how many values? Gamma has three values. Uh, gamma is having a value of minus one. Gamma has a value of one and gamma has a value of zero. But we said that mod gamma, if I consider mod gamma, then it can take value from zero to one only. They cannot take values minus. Agreed everyone? But what does minus one indicates? It indicates that is a short circuit load. What does one indicates? It's a open circuit load. And what does zero indicates? It's a matched load. 
everyone understood that if it is minus one, I'm indicating what short circuit. If you can see again, I'll show you again. So if it is if 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 it is short circuit, okay. If it is short circuit, I'm getting minus one. So if I'm getting gamma as minus one value, then I can directly interpret that it's a short circuit situation. If I'm getting gamma as plus one, it is an open circuit situation. And if gamma is zero, then it is a matched condition. Everyone agreed to this. This three values. What does it indicate? And how load impedances are mapped to gamma? But gamma can take up a magnitude as zero to one uh, for magnitude. So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a gamma plane, okay, where I have an x-axis of real value of gamma, and y-axis I make as imaginary value of gamma. So I have a real value of gamma, and I have an imaginary value of gamma. And now we will plot the <coughs> magnitude. What does magnitude indicate? It indicates the radius. It indicates the radius. And e raised to j beta z will indicate the phase, isn't it? There, there is a two also. Two j beta z indicates the phase. Everyone agrees? Yeah. Please give me a last reply. Uh, please give me one reply that uh, everyone agrees that uh, how it goes zero, how it goes one, and uh, sorry, uh, the x-axis as real and y-axis and all. Yeah, good. Thank you. So what we will do is I will plot with a radius of zero. If I plot a radius of zero, where the circle will come exactly as? If you plot, I'll plot it with some other color. So if you plot z is uh, gamma is equal to zero, it will be this. So this is the center of the uh, chart, or this is the center of the gamma plane where radius uh, radius is zero. And when gamma is equal to zero, when the load is matched. So this point I can call it to be matched point. Everyone agrees. This point is called as matched point. Okay. Then I have the maximum value as gamma equals to one. So this goes. Oh, I'm sorry. This goes as maximum of gamma equals to one. Now, on the real axis, it will cut here as one, and over here it will cut as minus one. So wherever it cuts to one, when the value of gamma is one, it is an open circuit situation, and when the gamma is minus one, this is a closed, uh, short circuit situation. So this is short circuit, and this is open circuit. Agreed, everyone? And in center, I have the match point. Everyone agrees to this? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So what I have is now I have a I have this as gamma plane, and this is my maximum radius of one, and the total phase angle that can go from here to here is actually two pi, but we have seen that that z comes as lambda by 2 so total movement of 2 pi will give me how many how many um, lambdas lambda by 2 or we can say 0.5 lambda yeah so when we move a complete circle from your back to your then it is actually 0.5 so if i consider this to be my zero point and i move all the way like this okay all the way i go like this and come back over here then I have actually went on to 2 pi, but in terms of wavelengths, if I consider this becomes 0.5 times of lambda. Understood? So the complete total rotation is lambda. Yeah. Yeah. So we are actually ready for Smith chart now. And we can go finally to the uh, to one smith chart and check the points. Okay, I will just insert one smith chart for you. Now this is a smith chart. Everyone can see smith chart. Everyone can carry on their smith charts also. Uh, please keep your smith charts also on the desk and immediately when I point mark the point, you please mark on your smith charts. Okay. 
so let us go to the smith chart now actually the smith chart is in the gamma plane okay so <coughs> so this point this axis is the real value of gamma and there is a vertical axis which you cannot see on this chart actually is imaginary part of gamma so the smith chart is actually uh, it's actually been drawn on which plane it is on the gamma plane okay and uh, here there is this is again a real part of gamma and this again goes as an imaginary part of gamma everyone can see please check on your smith charts uh, there is one horizontal line going this is a real part real part of the uh, gamma and there is a vertical line which is not shown actually but which goes from minus 90 to plus 90 like this is uh, is the uh, imaginary line of gamma okay now where will be gamma equals to 0 at the center of this line so this will be at gamma is equal to 0 so this point is actually gamma equals to 0 so when gamma becomes equals to 0 this can, this point can be called as what point it can be called as a matched point so the center of the smith chart is called as the matched point because there the gamma equals to 0 so if there is gamma is equal to 0 then what zl will be equal to so at that point zl will be equal to z not or that point i can called it as a z not point is yes or no because match point we are calling at the z not point so the center point of the smith chart is the match point of the z not point okay on the real axis this side it's minus 1 and this side becomes plus 1 correct so minus 1 is a short circuit side and plus 1 is an open circuit point yeah everyone agrees so this side of the smith chart this area of the smith chart is minus uh, it's a open circuit point side and this side of the smith chart is the short circuit side everyone agrees to this yeah so these are major uh, major points that you have to mark on your smith chart okay center is a match point short circuit point open circuit point now you can see there are some circles passing like this i highlight that circle you can see there is one circle passing like this okay this circles are called as the resistance circles this circles are called as the resistance circle whereas you can see this lines likewise coming like a fountain this lines are called as reactance circles so we have two circles one is called as resistance circle and second one is called as a reactance circle now if i wanted to let's say plot zl equals to 1 plus 2j okay i wanted to plot zl equals to 1 plus 2j please look into your smith chart everyone have their own smith chart in front of their uh, uh, in front of them yeah everyone is having their uh, okay i'll zoom it everyone is having their uh, smith chart in front of them Mm, zooming option i need to check yeah on the search option sorry zoom, zoom, zoom. yeah now you can see uh, we have uh, we wanted to plot uh, a value of uh, let's say zl of 1 plus 2j okay now the <clears throat> impedance is always written as r plus minus jx okay so we have a real part and we have an imaginary part imaginary part can be positive or can be negative if we have positive then we have to go upwards and if we have negative then we have to go downwards okay so if i wanted to have a one so real part is one so come on this horizontal line and see where is one so you can see this is one uh please come on your smith charts please see your smith charts on the horizontal line you see there is a one over here okay 
now you want you don't want only one you want one plus or minus jx so you want it to go plus or minus jx now for jx you can see there are some values written on this outermost circle okay here inside inside values these are all reactance values so you have 1j 1.2j 1.4j then 1.6j 1.8j and so on so we want 1 plus 2j so this is the resistance circle that passes here and i want 1 plus 2j and 2 2 is on this side so i have 1 plus 2j so i'll just mark it with other color so this becomes actually the intersection point so this becomes 1 plus 2j please mark on your smith charts 1 plus 2j if i wanted to plot similarly 1 minus 2j then you can come down this is a circle which passes through 1 so this is a circle which passes through 1 and for 2 this is a circle which passes through 2 so this point becomes the intersection and then i get z as 1 minus 2j understood everyone is it fine for everyone yeah everyone has found that points on smith chart yeah so what i can say is uh, a last point that i wanted to cover in this and then we can stop the session probably uh, so the last point is to be very much uh, important is uh, here we have said that the center point is z naught now for a transmission line we know that z naught can vary based on r l g c so we can have a transmission line of 50 ohms we can have a transmission line of 60 ohms we can have a transmission lines of 100 ohms 150 ohms and so on and so forth so if z naught is changing every time then my smith chart uh, should also change with respect to z naught because the center has to be like if suppose i make the center of 50 ohms then my whole smith chart will be with respect to 50 ohms if i make the center as 100 ohms then whole smith chart will be of 100 ohms yes or no but to solve this problem and not to have multiple z naughts or multiple types of smith chart what we did is we normalized the complete chart with respect to z naught okay so now whatever my z naught is my smith chart will be applicable because what i'm doing is I'm dividing my Z naught by Z naught. So the value comes around as one. So at the center, I want Z naught and Z naught is divided by Z naught. So the value should be one. That's why the center value is one. It is not zero. It is one because it is coming to Z naught. Okay. Who is zero over there? Gamma is zero. Okay. Everyone understood what I'm saying. Is it, is it too much, too heavy? Everyone understood that at the center we have actually Z naught, and I'm normalizing the uh, I'm normalizing the uh, chart with respect to Z naught. So when I'm coming at the center, I'm reaching Z naught, and I'm dividing by Z naught, so I'm getting one. So center becomes one, okay, with respect to impedance. But with respect to gamma, it is zero, okay. Yeah. So unit circle or the unit resistance circle, resistance value over there is one. So unit resistance circle is the one where you have to reach to reach the center. Yes or no? So every time when I wanted to reach, uh, when I wanted to have a match condition, I need to reach the center of the chart. So to reach the center of the chart, I have to come on this unit circle. That is very, very, very essential. Okay, I'll just erase this circle so that you can see it clearly. Uh, let's say I increase it to 150. Oh, it is not helping. 200. Now you see this is Z naught. Okay, and to this center, there is only one circle passing. Yes or no? This circle is the unit circle. This circle is the unit circle or unit resistance circle. So, aap Smith chart pe kahi par bhi ho. If you are using Smith chart to match, where you have to reach? Yeah, if you are using Smith chart to match, where you have to reach?
yeah you can give me answer where you have to reach if you are matching if you want to match then where exactly you have to reach oh good you have to actually reach at the center yes or no oh vicky really nice you have to reach at the center so if you wanted to reach at the center there is only one circle possible where it will take you to the center and that and that that circle is the unit circle yes or no so you have to reach to one that is the center of the of the smith chart and that center of the circle or the center of the smith chart only passes through or only one circle passes through that center which is unit circle so wherever you are on the smith chart first you have to reach on the unit circle and then come to the center okay and second important thing that you have to notice whenever we are on the smith chart we are in the uh, we are in the gamma plane okay and how i have written gamma gamma i have written as mod gamma e raised to uh, j to beta z right so now if i have that mod gamma and e raised to j beta z this type of representation of a complex number is called as a polar representation and if i'm on a polar plot i cannot walk linearly i have to walk on circles so whatsoever happens if you wanted to reach at the center you have to move on circles so chart is all about moving on circles so you have a lot of circles onto it uh, i hope i have cleared the basic concepts of how smith chart is actually developed uh, what is the basic important points that you have to consider on a smith chart what are the points that are really important to be noticed on the smith chart uh, <coughs> it is not yet complete the, the session is not yet complete we will have another session on uh, 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 the matching components because i wanted to keep that in my exams uh second important point is like what what all topics would be there in the examination uh for, for the for the for the test next week uh so for the test next week you have uh, the topics from uh you can list them down the topics are uh, we have some topics uh, we have a uh topic on waveguide oh sorry i'll, I'll write a, a bit native So the first topic that we have is on waveguide. So we have a waveguide. Then we have a topic on uh, in waveguide. We have both the topics on uh, rectangular as well as on circular waveguides. Circular waveguide, and then we will have uh, problems on uh, waveguide. on waveguide and then uh, third we will have a uh, <coughs> problems on waveguide and then we will have a uh, uh, devices or or components of waveguides components one derivation will be surely there on components so one derivation will be there on components we have done it in class uh, then there will be also ferrite devices Ferrite devices of which notes will be uploaded by Friday on V Live, so you can check on V Live to get the get the notes on this. And then one problem will be there on uh, problem on uh, lumped matching. Lumped matching. So probably we will discuss tomorrow where sh when can we keep a second session of. Uh, lumped matching uh, and then we can have a lumped matching session and then it will be there on, in your uh, internal assessment exams so this many topics are hardcore important for your exams please prepare well and uh, we can also have recitation sessions if you really want it you please uh, uh, <laughs> uh, sanif is, is it is it really not visible at all is it is it, is it really not uh, is it really not uh, comfortable? Okay, I'll 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 write. Okay, I'll write. I'll I'll type. I'll type. Wait. So let me type the things. So the word document and open. So we have uh, waveguides. Oh, I'm sorry. 
we have a wave guides in which we will have a rectangular rectangular and a circular wave guides uh, okay then we have definitions of uh, definitions that we have done uh, it might be asked for two marks okay definitions will might be asked for two marks then uh, then we have uh, something on uh, we will have problems on uh, wave guides uh, then we will have uh, 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 we will have wave guide components wave guide components and in components we will basically have uh, uh, basically have ferrite devices also ferrite devices and uh, uh, junctions which we have done in class junctions and uh, uh, please make sure that junctions one derivation will be there so i will have a derivation on junction not on uh, ferrite devices okay ferrite devices you will get it from uh, uh, v live or by friday so we will do it on friday okay and then uh, remaining is one problem on uh, on lump matching lump matching and uh, we will decide one session for it and uh, some uh, two mark question based on uh, question based on uh, transmission theory transmission line line theory which we have covered today okay some two marks questions will be there based on that uh, some two marks question from uh, rectangular and circular waveguide definitions uh, of course some two marks questions also from two marks question uh, from uh, the wave theory topic that we have done wave theory topics okay so this is how uh, the total uh, uh, set of questions that you can expect in your exams so i hope uh, you have uh, 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 definitions we have done uh, yes yes uh, of course it is only on lumped matching definitions we have uh, uh, we have done with uh, uh, the definitions which i have given in class for uh, wave guides also the definitions which we have we have spoken today about uh, the impedances and all that uh, so that will be there uh, uh i i really i really thanks you guys for uh, coming to the session and actually making this session uh, success and uh, uh, please allow me to take one more session you can uh, post uh, you can post me that when should i keep that session but it should be before saturday because saturday you guys will be busy and i don't want to keep the session at the very last moment so that uh, we can uh, then you can practice actually and we can meet in the college and we, we can discuss the things okay so please uh, please tell me the session when should we keep it okay uh, and then of course we will have some recitation sessions for problem solving okay you we will keep that also so that uh, you guys can uh, solve the paper very well and uh, you can score good in this paper okay yeah yeah thanks thanks a lot dear and uh, good night and uh, thanks a lot